Like I mentioned in my last video, I'd like to branch out on the type of things that I post on this channel. I know I just, I started with K-pop and I was just gonna post K-pop, but I also would like to post personal art and maybe even like some anime fan arts because I also watch anime. So this is gonna be the first one and we're gonna start off with Demon Slayer because I really like the anime and the art style is really cool. Let's talk about this painting. I started off with this coat because I knew that was gonna take the longest and I picked a color to begin with. In this case, it was green. So I marked with the pencil all the little squares that were green on his coat and then covered it in tape and cut out the marked areas so I can paint over it comfortably. While painting, I made sure to constantly be looking at my reference photo, and you may notice a few of the squares were darker than the others, but that's because that area was in a shadowed area on its coat, and you'll see it once I get it all down. So now I'm moving on to a different color on his coat, which is the dark blue. Basically the same process, mark it with a pencil, cover it in tape, cut it out, and then paint over it. This whole drawing was cell shading, so it was super easy to paint, but once I have my base color down, I go in and add the shadow in a darker color, and I try to follow the shadow line of the previous color, the green. The final color is yellow, and I'm not going to cover this in tape because with the previous colors, it bled a little bit through the tape, so I'm going to use this color to cover up those mistakes. On another note, I always make sure to put down a second coat of paint because with just one coat it tends to look quite streaky and I don't like that. I don't film that part because it takes up a lot of time and this footage was already over like an hour long. So yeah, but I do always put a second coat of paint. Here you can see what I mean when I said I tried to follow the shadows line. I painted the shadow of the yellow a brown color, but I actually ended up going back and doing it a little bit lighter because this one was too dark for my liking. Also, I'm so sorry for the lighting. It was super cloudy this day, so the sun was coming in and out at random times. There's also some footage that may look really dark, and that was because where I live, the sun is gone by like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So, and I wanted to keep filming, obviously, so I had to use a lamp that I had lying around. So the lighting's gonna be kind of bad. But I was running out of time for painting, and I really wanted to get this done. And also, if my paint dries, I can't mix the same color a second time, so I had to use it up. That, and I don't have the money or space for studio lights. When I work on pieces that are cell shaded and don't require a lot of blending of colors, I work in sections of color. For example here, everything that is green, I paint green. And it's just to keep my colors consistent because, and then also because I can't really mix the same color a second time. Usually when I paint, I use the base as a light color and then I paint the darker color on top. For example, the base coat and then the shadow on top. But here, I made a mistake and my red turned out too dark and I didn't want a darker shadow on top of it. So I ended up lightening my red a little bit and just basically using it as a highlight. Another thing that I do is I paint around my pencil work and it's just so I don't have to redraw what I just drew. I don't do that with everything, like I didn't do it with the hands, but I did do it on the face mostly because his face has a lot more detailed features, whereas his hands just have like those little lines that are not that hard to redraw. So once again, once my base coat is done, I go in and do the cell shading with a darker color. Uh, working around my pencil line and always adding a second coat once I finish. Also, I don't know why or how, but I tend to get paint everywhere like on my hands, so I try to paint away from the areas that I've already painted on, so I'm not like reaching over wet paint and then accidentally stamping it onto other areas of the canvas, which I've done before. You can see it a little bit better here. I'm painting down and away from the areas that I've already painted. One of the most common questions that I get asked is what brushes do I use and what paints do I use? As for brushes, I'm going to be very honest and tell you that I don't actually have a lot of information or knowledge on what is the best brand and which ones work better than others. I just get artist loft because that's what I've always known and it's what I always go to and they've worked great for me all the times that I've used them. And they're not that expensive. I think I get mine at Walmart. 
I wouldn't worry too much about brands for brushes, I would just get whatever is affordable and whatever is most comfortable for you. For example, I prefer uh, large round brushes over like flat brushes or whatever. Just get what you think will work for you, don't worry too much about expensive brushes. As for paint, I first started off with a brand called Apple Barrel and it's a very cheap brand. They come in like these little bottles and they cost less than a dollar, maybe like 95 cents a bottle I get. And I would get mine at Walmart. So I would just have all these bottles of paint. And then when I got more serious about acrylic paintings, I noticed that these paints were very cheap and thin and required a lot of coats for nice opaque colors. So I moved on to a brand called Liquidix Basics. And these cost around maybe seven to eight dollars a bottle depending on the size that you get i always get the largest size unless it's a color that i don't often use that's another thing you don't need every color and every bottle of paint that you see learn to mix colors it's going to save you a lot of money i also recently got to try a different brand called the master's touch and that one was a little more expensive it was like 10.99 a bottle and it it was the quality was a lot different but I only got it because the Liquid X Basics was out and I really needed black and white paint. Also disclaimer, I am not a professional artist. This is not my job, it's just a hobby. I enjoy painting. I took art class all of my high school years and took some in college and I really like it. I've been painting ever since I could remember, so yeah, but I'm not like a professional. This is just all from my own experience, so take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> And the last thing we'll say for this little segment is don't spend a lot of money on expensive material on a medium you probably might not like. And this isn't just for acrylic paint, this is also for markers, um, color pencils, watercolors. Don't spend a lot of money on the expensive stuff. Try the cheap stuff first because you might not end up liking it. Like I found out recently that I'm not that great at color pencils and I was almost gonna buy these expensive color pencils to try it and it's just it's not my cup of tea so I'm glad that I didn't do that. <laughs> try the cheap stuff and if you don't like it you know try a different medium. If you do like it practice it a little bit and then move on to the more expensive stuff. I also always say the artist makes the paintings and the art not the supplies that they use. I know that for sure when I first started um, getting into art and painting and whatnot I thought I needed all this expensive material for my art to look good and that's not the case. When you see incredible artists put out all this incredible work it's because they've put years and years and years of work into their art for it to get this good. Practice every single day. If you don't feel inspired doodle on the edge of your paper just practice every single day and you will constantly improve every single time that you draw or every single time that you paint you are learning new things and you are getting better at it so yeah don't give up <laughs> so now that i'm done rambling about that i'll answer one final question which was how do i do my line art and for line art i use a liner brush and it's artist loft in size zero zero i believe and it is a round brush i put a little bit of black paint on my palette which is a styrofoam plate and I dip my brush, the edge of my brush, in some water and then I put it back on the paint and just pick up a little bit of paint. And this will make my paint a little runny and it causes the uh, brush to run a lot smoother on my canvas. You don't need a lot of water. If you put too much water on your paint, it'll cause it to be too runny and it'll be very streaky and almost see-through on your canvas. So more paint to water ratio. There's, I can't really give you an exact measurement because it's just one of those things that you learn by practicing and you learn by doing so it's not hard it's super easy and yeah that's all i do for my line art i actually had so much fun doing the line art on this painting because demon slayer has a very unique way of doing their line art and they have certain areas where it's very heavy and thick and then it kind of thins out so i have shaky hands sometimes so it was super easy and like the, you can't make mistakes if it if you got out of the line a little bit, you just make that area thicker, and even though it's not exactly like the line art in the original picture, it gave it a unique touch in a way. <laughs> so yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I made so many in this one, and I wish I could have covered them, but I took out most of the footage just to save up on time. So here is the finished painting. I had so much fun with it. Let me know what you think and if you would like to see more stuff like this. I don't know. I had fun. I'd like to post more stuff like this. I probably will, to be honest. <laughs> But either way, let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching and I hope I'll see you in my next video.
Bye.